First of all, I just want to do a little recap of what this project is. This is a poster we had up at one of the um, events on campus a couple of years ago, and there's another poster that I didn't bring that was up at UC um, Nationalist Conference last summer. Um, so it's the UCSC Herbarium Sequencing Initiative, and, and what we propose is that we take 500 of our interesting, recently collected, well-photographed specimens of mushrooms um, from Santa Cruz and some of the surrounding areas in California and get a basic DNA barcode for them. And when I get to my part of the talk, I'll talk about why a DNA barcode is something we even want. What does it mean to have a DNA barcode? Um, and why is that a useful kind of information? But for now, you just need to know that we're covering 500 specimens, getting a DNA barcode for each of them, the ITS region. It's a little bit more wonky piece of information, but for now, um, you can uh, basically, that's the standardized region that academics have decided is a good universal cross higher organisms um, area of the DNA to look at. And this is a project that has pretty broad involvement with different kinds of groups. So we have undergraduate uh, students at UCSC working on this project. We have community members, that's you all, members of Mushroom Observer, uh, people across the state of California, researchers, academic researchers at UC Berkeley, as well as a lot of places elsewhere now. Um, as the project grows and gains attention, we're getting resources from other academics, um, as well as citizen scientists in the broadest sense. Uh, and I gave a version of this talk, not this first part, but when I get up here, uh, to the Cal Academy of Sciences. Uh, on March 3rd, I think it was, and um, basically said, this is what the Punks Federation is and what we're doing. And they were, it was just for the staff and researchers of the Cal Academy, it wasn't even a public talk. And they were really excited about it. Um, they are ostensibly an institution that supports what we're doing. And the guy who organized my visit there said, the reason I wanted you to come talk is because you're doing it right in their wheelhouse. You're sort of showing them up. Um, and I was excited to bring them the message of what the Fungus Federation is doing and hope uh, they said that they would like to have a public version of that talk at some point in the near future. So hopefully we'll get to continue trumpeting the Federation's success. Um, before I get up here though, I'm going to introduce Penelope, um, who has been working in the herbarium on one end of this project, and I would argue probably the most critical end. Um, she is doing the dirty work of curating an herbarium and getting it ship-shaped so that someone who is an academic or even just a motivated amateur scientist can come there and access our collections that have been sequenced more easily and in a, an efficient way. Um, so I want to preface this by saying that Penelope is probably the most competent person we've ever had working in the herbarium. She is amazing. She's a wizard. Um, I go in there and I'm like, Penelope, I really need a, like 15 or 16 inch alumnus pulled right now. It would be great if they have accession numbers. She's like, oh yeah, here they are. Here's the box. It's already done. They all have accession numbers. So I've been consistently impressed. I'm nowhere near as good at working the herbarium as she is. Um, and she can tell you a little bit about what she does now. Yeah. <laughs> 
because it's a long process to go through the engraving, if you look at the screen, you can see like some pop-ups coming up. And when I when I get a specimen, I like look at the label and you first you know figure out what the label says because sometimes it's not the most neatly written um, <laughs> writing. And um, and then I enter it in and then I make sure I check the uh, species fungiworm or uh, mushroom observer to make sure that I know the current like current status of the name of those mushrooms and then I change it in the database you know, in the notes I say okay it was previously named this just so that we have that reference and um, and then I'll make a new label for that specimen and put it in the bag and then you know so I have a camera here because sometimes I run into these labels I just can't read so I have this folder called picture questions that I send to Christian picture questions and then there's like a picture like what does the second line say? Or where is the location of this thing? Or you know, things like that. Okay, so you can. So that was three hours. <laughs> Forget about that. Forget about that. Okay, and so then, so then, like, after I've been work, like working data entry for a while, I was like, okay, we need Santa Cruz specimens. I've I've had enough of like all these specimens from random places, or you know having no locations and like, you know, I decided that I was only going to try to enter the ones that had a good label. And also from Santa Cruz County, because we want to get like, that's our main priority for this project, you know, we want to have a whole collection of everything that has been collected in Santa Cruz and also know what hasn't been collected that has a record that, you know, maybe we'll have a collection of someday. So, so then I went through all these boxes, because this is how the collection started. Just a bunch of boxes in the museum and lab rooms connected. Um, Chris Lathan on my case, hey, like, talk to Christian, we need to do something with all these boxes, I need them out of here, I don't want these boxes anymore. So uh, yeah, I just went through them and like, okay, like these found some ones from Santa Cruz and then organized it and put the thing. And so yeah, I got some like, okay, no location, all right, low priority, all right, this is like Santa Cruz and surrounding areas, and you know, organize it a little more so that I can like, do some more data entry. So, <laughs> well, these, are some, these are some little uh, pictures that I want to show you guys. The little weird thing, yeah. <laughs> we actually have an identification for it now, and I don't remember, I, I should, I should have like, Noted what, what the little word thing actually is, but I don't remember. Pseudo Antholina. Um, what? It's Pseudo Antholina. Oh, yeah, because you collected it, all right? <laughs> Crushed. So I made these like 
these wax, these wax bags that we used to collect, I like cut them and I made like, different sizes to hold, you know, the little guys, make them feel like they're in the video. And desk camp packages are another important player in this game um, because they keep the mushrooms nice and dry and uh, prevent them from getting mold, hopefully. Some have already gotten mold. But apparently, they could just still be sequenced when they're moldy. Some, some of them. If you guys are Yeah. For some reason, in case you guys are wondering, Agaricus is the most common genus to be a moldy. Um, I don't know why, but it just seemed like even if they had just packages in them, maybe there was already mold growing on them, and then it just like.
All right, yeah, these are, so, then cleaning the data, making the locations consistent, making sure that um, I have, like, the names checked for all the mushrooms, and, um, and then once I, like, finalize it and then check it over, um, things over with Christian to make sure names are all good and everything looks pretty and how he wants it and, you know, accurate. Uh, then I assign everybody uh, accession numbers. And that's like the thing that makes them um, part of the museum. Um, so you can go to the next one. Um, so an accession number is just, yeah, it's like an ID for a specimen in the museum. And um, in the museum, there's, you know, plants category, mammals category, reptiles, and fish, and everything except, well, we, had, we have a fungi collection, and then I noticed when I wanted to put, when I needed to put it in the ledger that they weren't ever accessioned. So they were like an informal collection, and um, because it was the old curator of the museum, she was she, um, so she has a nice collection, but they, they're not accessioned. And um, so it was actually kind of nice because we got our nice new accession <laughs> ledger, just with fungi, and, um, and I got to start from one. So, I got to start. so that was really nice because I was able to just, all right, everything I got, all right, make it alphabetical, and then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. <laughs> so that's very helpful when, for me. Um, but one thing about um, accession ledgers is usually you get a specimen, give it to the museum, and then you create an accession number for it, add it to the ledger, and then create a label and put it in the collections. But you usually don't have a thousand all at once. Um, so it's not such a process to accession them. I had Chris's class help me because he was doing a curation class. Chris, Chris Lay is the manager of the museum or the head curator guy. Um, and he had a curation class. And so they helped me accession the 1,080 specimens um, a little bit. But for the most part, I got a really good workout. <laughs> Um, yeah, so that's the accession ledger, makes it official. Um, and then to make labels. So I was trying to learn how to make labels with FileMaker Pro, which is like the one that's typically used. I um, mean, Chris Lay has been super busy because he just he tries to do everything. He's like the only guy at the museum. And so he was just kind of going crazy because it's the last week of school and he's preparing for his field class next quarter, and so I was like, okay, I'm just going to learn it. I'm just going to do it myself. And then it didn't work out, so I meant to add in like a cross out and then put with Excel, because I ended up making them with Excel. And it was not too, it was not too hard, but yeah, it worked out. And then sort it, and then check to make sure it's perfect, because, uh, Yeah, what's acid-free paper, and, uh, why? Okay, that's a good question. So we print the labels on acid-free paper because it doesn't, it's supposed to last longer? I think. Yeah, it doesn't it doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't, yeah. It doesn't crumble. It doesn't break down. Yeah, so I mean, museum, it, the idea is like the museum could last forever, you know, or until like, yeah. So we want it to last as long as possible. And also not damage any specimens or, um, yeah, so that's why we use that paper. Um, so yeah, it's a special paper, so that's why we want to make sure that the labels are really good because um, we to, don't want to print it more than once. Um, and then cutting all the labels, so that was another process, and I had a friend help me with that, but just like, you know, you have six on sheet or something, and then 
<laughs> right? And then you gotta make sure, well, I, lo I wanted to make sure they're alphabetical because when I'm sorting them, they would help. So these are the, the labels in, in one of the boxes. There's actually like four of these boxes filled with labels. Um, yeah, and then uh, this is the system that I got down to switch out the old labels with the new ones. And so I would take a box, I think these were like ends, and I would put it in alphabetical order, just lay them all out, and then I would take the stack of M labels and I would find them and like put, put them on top. And then once I switched the labels out, then it's like, all right, I just sort them alphabetically into the drawers. And that's what worked fine, but it took me a couple of letters, A, C, which are big letters, and a couple of drawers of those letters um, to figure out that there's a more efficient way to do it. So, but that's what I've been working on for the past week. And yeah, it's been. Uh, how do you alphabetize your numerical sequence? Uh, alphabetize. Didn't you say earlier that you had a numerical sequence? Yeah, we, well, well, we don't. We don't. Uh, the the accession number isn't. That doesn't have to be um, alphabetical at all. I mean, because usually you get like a collection of something. Um, you know, Squillis, and then someone brings you a collection of a kits, and you session them as they come in, so, you know, they're usually not alphabetical, and so you usually don't get to do anything like this, but because I started from scratch, I was able to make it a little easier on myself, and, um, but yeah, it doesn't matter which order the numbers are in, that's just a, a record for, you know, like an ID for the museum. Yeah. Ha, ha, ha.